Greetings, friends. My name is Peter, and this is the Retro Unscripted YouTube channel. Today's video is a video log or vlog for June. Today is June 4th. I am fresh off my trip to Fun Spot up at Weir's Beach, Beach in New Hampshire. Uh, it was a blast to go up there, and while I am sore, both from the waist down, from standing for eight hours a day, and my right arm is sore from playing way too much track and field and hypersports, um, I did want to share some information with you guys about the channel, uh, and also share with you some recent game pickups that I got from Game Depot in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Let's talk a bit about the channel first. Uh, as of today, we have 141 subscribers to the channel, which to a lot of YouTube personalities is a drop in the bucket, uh, but to myself, for someone who doesn't do this professionally or for monetization purposes, uh, and really just does it for fun. It certainly means a lot to see that 100 plus people uh, are subscribed and are interested in the work that I do. Um, I'm fully aware that this isn't the most professional project out there, um, that my recording equipment is substandard. Uh, my lighting, as you can see uh, from my window over there, that's pretty much the best lighting that I have. Um, so it's not something that I'm doing professionally, but it's something that I'm doing for fun and something that I'm hoping that my my reputation uh, from writing for other websites in the past, my work with RetroWare TV, which is fairly recent, and my activity in social media, most notably on uh, Twitter and Google+, is enough to get people interested to kind of check things out and see what it is that I do. And so far, it's working exactly like I had hoped it would. Um, I know that uh, in the last video I had uh, I had mentioned some concern about keeping the channel going. I had decided I was going to do that anyway, and it really uh, it really hit me here uh, to get comments back from you guys um, thanking me for wanting to continue the channel. Um, I mean that you can't get a better compliment than that. Having people just thank you for doing what you do. Um, I enjoy doing this, to be honest. Uh, it's a little tough at times, uh, especially during the summer uh, when it gets pretty warm up here where I do my shooting. Um, but I, I enjoy doing it. It's probably going to be my legacy, that and the thousand plus games that I have in my collection. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to do it and to share it with whatever audience is interested in watching it. Um, and you guys are that audience. So uh, to all of you to, who subscribe, who thumbs up or like the stuff and share it, um, I mean, thank you very much. That's really all I can say. It, it, it's very touching and it means a lot to me. There are a, there's a ton of talented YouTube personalities and content creators out there. And for you guys to spend some time to watch my stuff, um, you, you can't really get any better than that. So thank you to all of you who do what you do. So with that out of the way, what to expect for the channel for June? Um, you can expect uh, a new episode of Retro Unscripted every week. Um, I have shot the one for this week just before I put this video together, and both of them will be up later tonight. Um, that video is on my Fun Spot experience, uh, and not really structured in any way. Uh, it's more just off the cuff uh, relation of experience and what I liked and didn't like about the event. If you guys have been checking out the channel recently, you probably also saw that I put up several videos from, uh, or a few videos from the Fun Spot floor. Uh, one of them was a brand new Pete Plays video with me playing Star Trek Strategic Operations Simulator, which was actually the best score I had posted the entire weekend, so you guys got to see that. As usual, when I'm on camera, I tend to play better, I don't know why. Uh, the other two videos, one of them is uh, footage of Pinball Way, which shows a bunch of the different pinball machines at Fun Spot. Thanks to Ben Padden from Port Center, who is a RetroWare TV colleague, also a great person and an epic YouTube personality, um, for making the suggestion to do that filming. I did it primarily for him, but I'm glad that a lot of you have enjoyed it as well. Also, I shot a video called Fun Spot Favorites, where I took very short videos of some of my favorite games at the American Classic Arcade Museum and talked a little bit about them. Plus, I now can show that I had some uh, records on track and field and on uh, hypersports for that weekend, which are pretty cool just to have for posterity reasons. So if you haven't checked those videos out, make sure you check. They're under videos for the channel. 
Um, I may make a, uh, a fun spot section that has those videos in it just so you guys can see it. That'll be easier to find. Um, going forward, though, the, uh, the content will go back to what it's been. Um, it'll have a specific topic every week that I'll be talking about uh, with specific experiences and such. Um, I'm also, I don't know whether I'm going to do this on video or whether I'm going to do it written. Right now I'm thinking it's going to be written with some pictures. Uh, something called uh, Midway Mondays, which are going to talk about one specific Midway arcade or console game uh, every Monday uh, throughout the course of the summer. Um, it's my goal right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it necessarily every Monday, but it's something I really want to get in the habit of doing, especially while I have the free time while uh, college is not in session. So that's a goal for me to start doing. I'm also thinking about still doing the very short uh, YouTube uh, review sections where I'll have the game playing behind me and talk about each game for three to five minutes. Um, and that's something that's still in the works. Uh, depends on whether weather cooperates and the format. If I don't do it on video, though, I think I'm going to do it written. Uh, and that's going to be the next topic I'm going to touch on. Um, those of you who have been following Retro Unscripted on Twitter or have been visiting the blog probably haven't seen a lot of activity. As a matter of fact, I know you haven't because I haven't updated either of those very much recently. The reason for that is because I'm centralizing everything under um, on Twitter under my main account, which is at Pete Skerritt, P-E-T-E-S-K-E-R-R-I-T-T. Uh, that's the account that I've had with Twitter since 2008. That is where I have the largest number of followers and the widest reach. Uh, it is very daunting to be able to control two Twitter accounts at once. Uh, and one account inevitably suffers because of the other. And I want to devote all of my, um, all of my available social media time to one account and make it as best as possible and touch on as many subjects as possible, then try and uh, fluctuate between two accounts and have have them both kind of half effort. So if you're following me on Retro Unscripted, again, I invite you to uh, follow me as well on at Pete Scarrett, which is where a lot of my activity has been and will be for at least a foreseeable future. So please do that. As for the Retro Unscripted blog, it will continue to be basically a secondary housing for uh, YouTube video embedding. Uh, I'm not going to be writing any specific articles there. Um, any writing that I do from here on is going to be either for RetroWare TV as part of the consolation column there. And I'm also thinking about renewing or bringing back my original consolation blog, uh, making some tweaks to it and adding some content to it so that there's some cross-branding between what I do for RetroWare and what I do in my spare time. So if I do that and when I do that, I will definitely make that announcement and share it with you. Um, but the Retro Unscripted brand is going to be specifically for these YouTube videos and this series. So I hope that you guys will continue to follow me there as far as the channel goes. But definitely check out my main Twitter account for a lot more conversation, pictures, links, so on and so forth. The other thing is that uh, I know a lot of people laugh about Google Plus and think that it's kind of a waste of time. Um, but when I checked my Google Plus account recently, I had seen that there were 192 followers nine days ago. Uh, I'm now at 235,000. Now, granted, some of those, maybe a lot of those, may be kind of not real accounts. Uh, but I get a lot of engagement from people who follow me on uh, Google Plus, posting my own content as well as content from other great content creators uh, from RetroWare TV and beyond. So I'm going to make sure that I link my Google Plus account below. If you're not following me or have me in any of your circles there, I strongly recommend doing so because that's where a lot of uh, that's where I'm going to be doing a lot of my promoting, not only for Retro Unscripted and Consolation, but also for uh, other really worthy uh, content creators who really deserve the the extra traffic and who I think should get that. So make sure you check that out. Okay. First part of the video done, that's all the information you need to know about the channel and the social media stuff. But what you guys are really waiting for is what, what games did I get? I'm glad you waited because now's your time. Let's talk Nintendo 64 first because I haven't bought a lot of Nintendo 64 games as of late. And the reason for that is because 
I only have one Nintendo 64 controller pack. I cannot find those things anywhere around here. The ones that I can find are the really bad third-party ones that are untrustworthy. So I have just the one controller pack, so I try to be very careful when I buy Nintendo 64 games to make sure they either have battery backup or that they're games that don't really require me to save anything in order to enjoy them. Mace the Dark Age is a fighting game from Atari Games that was published by Midway. Uh, I believe this was 97, 98, somewhere around there. Um, this, I remember seeing in stores, and I never played it when I was working at Funko Land especially, uh, but I always wanted to, and I got a good deal on this, so I figured I would grab it. Uh, we'll see how good it is. I haven't been able to test it yet. I will talk about it on a later video log, that's for sure. The other N64 game I got, and I'm really glad I found it because I couldn't find it anywhere before, this is Star Wars Episode I, Battle for Naboo. Uh, this is basically Rogue Squadron 1.5. Uh, it takes place in the Episode I universe rather than the original trilogy universe, um, and it's developed by Factor Five, the same the same team that did the Red Rogue Squadron games and Shadows of the Empire, um, and they really do great work. So I hadn't been able to find this until now, but I got a good deal on it, and I was happy to add it to my library. I just have to make the time to play it now. So those are the N64 games. Again, cool to add some of those to my library, and I'm still looking to add more. If I can find another controller pack locally, uh, obviously the number of games I get will increase. Then we'll move to 8-bit. Uh, I grabbed a couple of games as well. Uh, this is Willow from Capcom. Uh, never played this before. I've heard about it. I've heard people talk about it, but uh, never really spent any time playing it. Found it at a good price. Figured I'd give it a shot. And the other one, and I'm glad I have this because this completes a trilogy. This is Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, comes with the manual and also has a uh, slip cover, which is nice. So it's about as close to complete without getting the boxes you can get. And I got a really good deal on this. So thank you, thanks again to Game Depot for hooking me up. Moving to 16-bit now. Only one uh, Super Nintendo game, and it's John Madden Football 93. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. It's another sports game. Well, you know, in the Madden series, I had the original Madden for Super Nintendo. And I had, or I have 94 and 95, but I didn't have 93. So it was a glaring hole, and I filled that hole. So that's why I got it. Time for Genesis games, and yeah, that means it's probably time for more sports games. You're right. Uh, this is NFL 95, which I actually got for free. Uh, NFL 95 replaces a copy that I had that has a bad chip. I tried to clean it, and it didn't. Uh, it still doesn't work right, so hopefully this one will work better. This is Wimbledon Championship Tennis by Sega Sports. I uh, have not played this. I do like playing tennis games, though, so hopefully this one will be pretty good. And then the, uh, the more notable Genesis game that isn't a sports game, this is Columns 3, which was published by Vic Tokai and developed by Sega. Um, I'm not very good at Columns, to be honest with you, but in seeing some footage of this on YouTube with the more enhanced single-player mode, I'm kind of looking forward to putting this through its paces and seeing how good it is. And I got a good deal on this, too. <clears throat> so those are the cartridges. Let's talk discs. Back in 1997, uh, IDOS published a game called Fighting Force, which was developed by Core Design. That game was pretty fantastic. Um, I couldn't find that game. I did find Fighting Force 2, which is the sequel, and a not very well-received one at that. I haven't played this yet, so I can't really comment on it. Why did I get it? Well, because it's complete and it's immaculate. Um, the disc is in great shape. I know you can't really tell, but I mean, it's there's no scratching on it at all. Uh, the the case is in great shape, and you really can't find original PlayStation games like this that commonly around here anymore. So I grabbed it. Okay, this is one you guys are going to give me a hard time about, and I understand. I apologize to James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, for buying this. You tried to steer me away. I heard him telling me in my head, Pete, don't do it. 
You're better than that. This game is ass. But I bought it anyway. Independence Day. And again, just like with Fighting Force 2, the game is in immaculate shape. The disc has a couple of scratches along the, you know, along the outside, but still it's in really good shape. So I snagged it. We'll see how bad it really is. Now, speaking of bad, want a bad game? This here is Kiss Pinball, which was published by Take-Two Software and uh, developed by Tarantula Studios. I love pinball games. Those of you who know me know that I love pinball games. I mean, if you look in my, my collection, I have pinball games coming on my ears. So I had to get it because I hadn't played it. And I'm like, okay, how bad could it possibly be? Never ask yourself that question. This game is crap. Um, reasons that it's crap? Two. First of all, the camera is not adjustable. So the camera angle is the same all the time. And this leads to problem number two, which is the ball moves too fast for the camera. So it is very easy to lose track of the pinball, especially when it gains a lot of speed. So it's too easy to have the ball drain down the middle or to completely miss hitting it off the flippers. That can't happen. Not in a good pinball game. This reminds me a little bit of um, Extreme Pinball for the PlayStation, uh, but that game is actually better than this. So if you see this when you're out and about, take it from a pinball fan, don't. Next up is a double, uh, and the reason uh, I got this is because now I have the case and the manual for it, plus the disc is in better shape. Uh, this is NFL Blitz 2000 from Midway from uh, 1999. Happy to have this because, again, uh, the case is intact, although the front cover is cracked, uh, and I have the manual as well as the disc, so that's really nice to have. And the disc is in better shape than the one that I have. Next up is a game that I'm taking a chance on. I don't know anything about it. Um, I'm sure any of you who are PC game fans will probably be able to tell me whether uh, the game itself was any good. Uh, this is Quake 2. Uh, I have not played Quake 2. I didn't play the original Quake. As a matter of fact, the only Quake game that I've played was, I believe, was Quake 4 for the, uh, for the Xbox 360, and I only played that briefly. This is another situation where, again, the, the case is in great shape and the disc is in great shape. Um, I mean, you can, can't really see anything wrong with it. So I picked it up, and apparently it's pretty good. The reviews that I've read on it uh, from IGN and others have been pretty positive, so uh, we'll see if I like it. This is another one you guys are going to yell at me for. And I got it because, I don't know, this is... Uh, WCW NWO Thunder, uh, released in 1998 for the PlayStation. I know I probably could have just stuck with their version of Nitro that I have, but the thing that I remember about Thunder most of all was that each wrestler in the game has his own rant or promo that he cuts before you pick that person, saying why you should or shouldn't pick them. I just find those hilarious. Uh, I don't know. I, I probably made a mistake, but... Again, it's another situation where the game is in great shape, the the uh, the case is in great shape, and the manual is in great shape. So, and because those are tougher and tougher to find, I said, "What the hell?" And I got it. So those are the PlayStation games. So the last set, and they are the PlayStation Two games. And I know you're probably thinking, "But Pete, you have over 600 of these. What do you need more for?" Well, I got more anyway. This is another one you guys might yell at me for. This is uh, 24 of the game. Uh, all of these, by the way, come with manuals, but they're not in the cases right now. I was reading the manuals last night before bed and didn't put them back. Um, the thing I noticed about this, and the reason I gave it a shot, aside from the fact that it was a dollar uh, and it was complete, is that it comes. Uh, it, it's programmed by Sony Cambridge. So I'm hoping it's not terrible. Now the reviews tell me otherwise, but we'll see. Now, the thing about 24 of the game that's going to stand out for me is I've never seen the show. So, I may not understand a lot of what goes on here, but we'll see. 
Next up, another one you guys might kind of wag your finger at me for. This is uh, Batman Begins. Uh, the reason I picked this up is because uh, I had actually looked at it a few times at Game Depot before and no one bought it. Um, it has the original voice actors in it. I don't know how they present their lines, but I thought that was neat. There's vehicle driving. There's some stealth that goes on. Looks like it's a like an action game, like a beat 'em up. So, um, you know, I figured, you know, can I really go wrong with this? No, I'll I'll find out. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments below how dumb I am. Next up is Guilty Gear Isuka. Uh, I've only played one Guilty Gear game before, uh, and I was not very good at it. But the Guilty Gear games are just... I love the character designs and the music in these games. Just... I love it. So I'm hoping this is going to be pretty good. I've been getting into these fighting games that are not Street Fighter more and more lately. Uh, been big into King of Fighters and World Heroes and stuff like that. Obviously, this is going to be much different. Um, but I'm hoping that I'm going to like it. We'll see. Another uh-oh game. But before you pick on me, I want you to understand that this game is pristine. This is uh, Harley Davidson Race to the Rally. This game, and I can't show you the manual because it's, it's, it's near the bed, but I mean, the game hasn't even been touched. It's like the person bought it, looked at it, and said, I don't want this crap. And I don't see why. If you look at the back of the box, it looks like a cross between Criterion's Burnout series and then uh, Climax's Speed Kings game, which was for the PS2 and the Xbox. Um, where do I get the Burnout ideas from? Well, and you can't really see it, I'm sure, because of the glare but there's something here for oncoming, so you can drive into oncoming traffic. And there's near misses you can get to. So it seems like it would be an interesting idea. The other thing I heard about this game is that the licensed soundtrack, while the number of tracks is limited, is actually pretty good. So, um, And I got this for $4 complete. So I said, all right. We'll see. I haven't tried it yet. All of these games, with the exception of Kiss Pinball, I haven't even had a chance to test yet. Bought another game that's a double, but I bought it because it's complete in box rather than um, just disc only. This is uh, Anamusha 2 uh, Samurai's Destiny. Uh, the disc is in better shape. Whoops, or it might not be now. Uh, was in better shape than the one that I have. Uh, and again, just getting it complete means that I have Anamusha, Anamusha 2, and Anamusha 3 all complete with manuals ready to play. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. This is the stuff I didn't expect to find. Like another Anamusha game. This is Dawn of Dreams. Now this I had not seen. Uh, I knew it existed, but I hadn't seen it anywhere. And I saw it at Game Depot and snagged it instantly. I didn't know that the, uh, that the game has two discs. I had no idea. Um, and I really didn't know a lot about it. And the reviews of this were pretty good. I saw reviews in the 8 to 9 range, which is not bad for a game that was 2006, so like a, a year into the new generation of consoles. So um, I'm looking forward to putting this through its paces. Now granted, I am not a very good Anamusha player. I, I am not good with that kind of combat. I'm more hack and slash without thinking about blocks or strategic combat or anything. So I may struggle with this, but I've heard it's better for action players, so we'll see how I do. And then last... But not least, is a game that I am glad I found because I had heard good things about it and never played it. This is The Warriors from Rockstar Games. This is a, uh, this is a beat -em up in open cities, apparently, according to the back of the case. The reviews have been pretty good, um, and I got, a re I got a decent deal on this being complete. I only paid 10 for this. Um, I had the manual on the bed, but everything else is in here. I got the, the Rockstar registration card. Um, oops, this came out of the manual. Whoops. So I guess the manual isn't quite as complete as I wanted it to be. But um, I'm hoping this is going to be pretty good. I Again, I have not played it, but I like beat-em-up games, so I'm hoping that this is going to be as good as the reviews say. So this was a nice find. I did pass up some stuff that I'm hoping to get uh, the next time I visit. Uh, one of which is Ranger X for the Sega Genesis. Uh, 
I didn't know anything about it, so I passed it up. And then when I got home, I watched videos of it on YouTube, and boy, did I feel like an idiot for passing this game up. Uh, it's a really cool-looking shooter with great graphics for the time and pretty good music, so I need to grab that. Uh, the other thing, and I almost feel like I have to get this, uh, is, you know what, I'm not even going to tell you. Because I think I'm going to get it, and I'm going to do a, uh, I think I'm going to do a retro unscripted episode on it, so I don't want to give it away. But uh, I'll be going back to that store uh, in the next week or two, uh, and hopefully getting some more stuff. So those are the recent additions. That's all the information you need to know about the channel for now. Uh, again, thanks to all of you for subscribing, liking, sharing, all of that stuff. It really means a lot. Look for more content as we head through the summer, both here and from me on Retroware TV as well. If you haven't checked out uh, my articles on Retroware TV, you can do so. I'm under Consolation. Uh, it's under the article section, or better yet, I can do you one better and link both articles below this video so you can check them out on your own. Thank you all very much for watching this video log and for all of the videos here on the Retro Unscripted channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, friends. My name is Peter, and I will see you on the next episode of Retro Unscripted, which will be next week. Until then, take care.